morning, morning Cougars. Cougars. I'm Dalton, and today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. And I'm Aria, and it's a white day. And today's words of the day are dollars and cents. Please rise, Please rise and, and join us for the pledge. pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For today's lunch, we have mini cheese calzones or barbecue pulled pork sandwich. And the premium meal is pasta bar. And the sides are broccoli, cucumber slices, tossed salad, peaches, grapes, milk, or juice. For tomorrow's lunch, we have shrimp poppers with hot roll or Mexican pizza. The premium meal is spicy chicken sandwich. And the sides are sweet potato fries, cauliflower with cheese, fruit cocktail, milk, or juice. It's everyone's favorite part of the show. It's joke time. And I have a great one. What do you call a cow in an earthquake? I don't know. What? A milkshake. Each month we focus on a character word that we should all try to practice, model, and hopefully make a habit in our daily lives. Yes, we do. And February's character word is honesty. And it means being truthful to yourself and others. We can show this by admitting to your mistake. Listen up, Cougars. Congress Middle School's track team is holding a fundraiser for all of your dinner needs at Chipotle. Our CMS track team will receive 33% of fundraiser sales during this Chipotle fundraiser. Please plan to participate on, on Tuesday, March 7th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can participate digitally. You can participate by ordering ordering digitally or at the physical Chipotle restaurant located at 8600 North Board, Boardwalk Avenue. To participate digitally, order on the Chipotle mobile app or website using the code Q772JZN. To participate at the restaurant, tell the cashier of your participation before paying your bill. Thank you, and ag thank you again for all of your support for our awesome track team. Listen up, Cougars. Just a reminder that if you are participating in track, to sign up for impact testing ASAP. Two tests will be offered today, Thursday, February 16th, and next Wednesday, February 22nd. Sign up can be found on the webpage. Hey, Cougars, have you lost your lanyard? Or more importantly, your ID badge? If so, this is a great time to remind you about the cost for replacement items. Lanyards are $3, or a replacement ID badge is $5 after your one free reprint, if you are needing a replacement badge, you will need to email Miss Mays at the front office before coming down. Plastic badge holders are $1, a planner is $5, and a replacement binder is $3. If you find yourself needing any of these items, you will need to go see Miss Mays in the front office for your replacement items. Listen up, 7th and 8th graders. Are you interested in trying out for the Park Hill dance team in the future? Then you should attend our upcoming Open Gems. High school dance team seniors and coaches will lead these open gyms that will work on the skills being evaluated during tryouts. These open gyms are open to all 7th through 8th, 7th through 11th grade students. They will be held in the Congress gym during the following times. Tuesday, February 21st, 5 to 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, February 28th, 2.30 to 4 p.m. Thursday, March 2nd, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And Thursday, March 9th, from 2.30 to 4 p.m. The cost is $5 per open gym, and you do not need to attend all sessions. For more information, check out our Instagram, at Park Hill Dance. If you are a 6th or 7th grader interested in joining AVID, find the application on your Team Schoology page, see Mr. Bratcher, or talk to a counselor. Let's check out that awesome AVID video from Monday, so you can see again all of the amazing reasons why you should apply to be an AVID. They give you prompts to help organize your questions. 
so that you can better understand what you're doing in your classes. It gives you a different perspective in learning from not just your teachers teaching you, but you can learn how other students learn easier and in a better way. Um, I think tutorial is a way to get extra help with like, things that you're confused on and also help others understand what they're confused on better. Um, a TRF is something that we use to write down problems that we're confused about and it can help us by being in a group and them explaining how they found their process. I think they're so helpful. A TRF is a tutorial quest form and it helps you by taking things that you're confused about in your core classes and putting it in a tutorial with your classmates and how they learn about things and it helps you to better understand the subject. Uh, AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a program we have here uh, at Congress where students who can achieve but maybe just need a little bit of help, it's a few strategies to help guide them along the process. It's a success plan basically for you to be able to become the best you that you can be after graduation but also now as a student. We deal with things like um, organization, collaboration, we do a lot of uh, group work. We do tutorials twice a week, which are basically small groups that we get together. And in those groups, we say, hey, this is something that I'm really kind of struggling with in my, in my homework. Um, maybe we can put both of our brains together, or you know, the entire group's brains together, see if we can't figure this out together. All right, why should students join Avid? Well, if you're the student that really needs help with some of those wicker things like writing, inquiry, organization, um, I think you might want to consider this program, this class. Um, I think there's a lot of time spent on getting organized and making sure you have an organized planner and binder. Um, you know, we have the expectation of those extra notes, but you have the advantage of having that tutorial class on Tuesdays and Thursdays where you get that extra support. So I would say if you're a student who kind of struggles to keep your, your GPA up, this might be the class for you. Talk to your teacher about it today. How does focused note-taking help you in school? It keeps our notes organized. For me, it helps me study and for a test or review for a quiz. How does AVID help you get into college and in your daily life? AVID helps me in my daily life and for college um, because it will help me get good grades. Um, helps me get like organization and like be more organized like with my schoolwork and like. I've noticed that my grades have went up because of the way like like we do TRFs. Like it helps like my grades. What skills have you learned in Avid? No taking, problem solving, and being organized. Can I do Avid in high school? Absolutely, yeah. What is your favorite thing about being a tutor? The student. The first thing about being a tutor is being able to connect with my students to make a difference in their lives. What are the positives about Avid? You get all the help that you need and you make lots of new friends. What are some positives of Avid? Some positives of, positives of Avid are it can help you stay organized and it helps you uh, ask better questions and it can help you do better in school. Why do students join Avid? You, you do have to join Avid. It is a program where you have to apply and there's an interview process which that's life that is a thing that you have to do every time you go and get a new job there's an interview so you're starting to get that um, happening in your life and you're used to that but as far as just getting through the process actually being an abbot um, I mean you you know this with Tima it is it's kind of like a family because uh, we're together a lot it is a year-long commitment and we commit to each other and we commit to ourselves and we um, do a lot of work together. We, we collaborate, that's the C in Wicker. We collaborate and we um, make sure that we are all learning to the best of our abilities and we build ourselves up and build each other up. What do you think about the end of the month classes? I like it because we get to um, teach other kids about Avid. Mm -hmm.
If this is something you are interested in, please make sure you are filling out an application. Applications are due by February 24th. For today's celebration of Black History Month, we will be highlighting Ruby Bridges. Bridges was born on September 8, 1954. Bridges was the eldest of five children born to Abon and Lucille Bridges. As a child, she spent much time taking care of her younger siblings, though she enjoyed playing jump rope, softball, and climbing trees. In early 1960, Bridges was one of six black children in New Orleans to pass the test that, could, <coughs> that determined whether or not they could go to the all-white William France Elementary School. Two of the six decided to stay at their old school. Bridges went to France by herself, and the three children were transferred to McDonough number 19 and became known as the McDonough Three. Bridges and her mother were escorted to school by four federal marshals during the first day that Bridges attended William France Elementary. In the following days of the year, federal marshals continued to escort Bridges, though her mother stayed behind to take care of her younger siblings. That first day, Bridges and her mother spent the entire day in the principal's office. The chaos of the school prevented their moving to the classroom until the second day. A few days later, other white parents began bringing their children and the protests began to subside. On the second day, however, a white student <laughs> broke the boycott and entered the school when a 34-year-old Methodist minister, Lloyd Anderson Foreman, walked his five-year-old daughter, Pam, through the angry mob saying, I simply want the privilege of taking my child to school. Yet still, Bridges remained the only child in her class as she would until the following year. Every morning as Bridges walked to school, she would receive threats of even poisoning her food. As they walked because of this, the U.S. Marshals dispatched by President Eisenhower, who was overseeing this, her safety, allowed Bridges to eat the only food that she brought from home. In that same year, when she was six years old, her parents responded to a request from the Natu National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, and volunteered her to participate in the integration of the New Orleans school system, even though her father was hesitant. Now that Ruby Bridges, now that the Ruby Bridges Foundation exists to inspire the next generation of leaders to racism together one step at a time. Let's watch this short documentary to find out more. She became a leader in the civil rights movement at just six years old. Meet Ruby Bridges. Ruby grew up in New Orleans. Her parents, sharecroppers from Tylertown, Mississippi, moved there in the late 50s in search of a better life. The racially divided city had been ordered to integrate its public schools. Ruby would be the first and only black student to attend William France Elementary. November 14, 1960 would be Ruby's first day. Federal marshals escorted her to school past the throngs of protesters. Teachers at the school refused to instruct her and parents kept their children at home until the school provided a separate classroom for white students. I actually attended uh, this all white school alone for a whole year. I sat in an empty classroom with a teacher that um, was white who came from Boston to teach me because teachers in New Orleans refused to teach black children. Meanwhile, Ruby didn't miss a day of school that year. In 1996, she was reunited with her teacher, Barbara Henry. It was so wonderful to have a little student like Ruby. We had a grand time together, I think, side by side, okay. the, just the two of us. Ruby's courage inspired Norman Rockwell to feature her in this iconic painting, which Barack Obama hung outside the Oval Office in 2011. It's fair to say that if it hadn't been for you guys, I might not be here and we wouldn't be looking at this together. Once I saw that painting, I realized that there, were, there was something much bigger than myself. So I think that that sort of put me on my quest to tell my story and to work with kids. Today, Ruby travels the country speaking to young people, inspiring them, and sharing her truth, which is as relevant today as it was in 1960.
Stay tuned to our show for more influential people to celebrate Black History Month. Listen up, NGHS members. Your meeting is canceled today, so sorry for the late notice. And now, it's your favorite part of our show, the word of the day. That's right, and today's, word, today's words are dollars and cents. Enjoy today's Schoolhouse Rock after our show. And that's a wrap. I'm Dalton, and today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. And I'm Aria, and it's a white day. Have, Have a, a great, great day, day cougars. cougars. You know I love country music, and I practice daily on my out-of-tune cockamamie ukulele. But my daily ukulele playing ain't gonna get me far. I need a guitar and amp and some quadraphonics. And several hundred dollars worth of electronics If I'm ever gonna get to be a country western star Gotta get me some dollars and cents Dollars and cents Them greenback bills with the pictures of the presidents Now I hear you squawking, Miss Becky Sue Why don't you drop by the bank and I'll explain to you How you can make more dollars if you use a little common sense Chill out, young lady, no need to fret. Although you can't afford to buy that new equipment yet, you got a couple hundred bucks saved up in your birthday stash. Why not deposit them dollars in the bank instead? Then at the end of the year, you come out way ahead because the bank will pay you money in exchange for the use of your cash. And that's called interest. You're making money that way, and you can buy that gear about a year from today. Saving sounds mighty nifty, Mr. Banker, dude. You know I'd like to be thrifty, but I ain't in the mood. I'm inspired and I'm writing me a brand new country song. I got a lot of country western in my blood, like Reba and Loretta and Winona Judd. Gotta get me that equipment and I ain't about to wait too long. Gotta get me some dollars and cents, dollars and cents. Them greenback bills with the pictures of the presidents. So please, Mr. Bank, won't you tell me how I can get my mitts on some money right now? Cause waiting for my dollars really doesn't seem to make much sense. Why, sure, Becky Sue, I can give you a hand. I can lend you the money, but you must understand. When you borrow from the bank, then you gotta pay it back on time. And when you're done paying back every dollar that's due, you will find you paid them back a little extra, too. For every dollar you borrow, you gotta pay the bank a dollar and a dime. Again, that's interest, and it's just a fee. You pay to use the money that you borrow from me. We're talking about dollars and cents, dollars and cents. But them greenback bills with the pictures of the presidents. Since life is one experience that spares us no expense, we gotta use them dollars with a little bit of common sense. We gotta use them dollars with a little bit of common sense. <laughs> Are you sure Dolly Parton started this way? <laughs>